Hello makers and welcome back to Spectiva Studios. It's good to have you here. As an artist, one of the things I'm always finding that I do is working through a creative process. My creative process may be different from yours, but a lot of times I almost approach a scientific process. I think about something and say, what would that look like if I did this, this, and this? And so oftentimes I'm really working on kind of a concept of visually, will this work out the way I want it to work out? And I'll be honest with you, sometimes these uh, science experiments of, of sorts don't go anywhere. And I end up with something that doesn't really work, but it leads me on towards something else that may. And this is really one of those situations. So what I want to be able to do this week is something I've never done before conceptually. And I want to create a grid of little, little watercolor pieces. And uh, by the way, it's going to look like this. Yeah, it's going to look exactly like that when we're done. I don't know what it is yet because I haven't gotten there. But kind of working my way through this process, I've been thinking, how cool would it be if I had little squares of torn watercolor paper that I just used to create a grid on another piece of paper like this one here in front of me, right? Just so being able to kind of put these squares and create a grid of these different odd shapes, right? They don't, they're not all going to be perfectly square. They're going to be kind of torn in a squarish shape with some watercolor colors on them to create really the artistic elements. And that's what they want to do. So I thought about this and said, all right, that sounds great in, in practice, but what does it look like? And so I, uh, I'm, this is probably showing you how the sausage is made, but in truth, you know, oftentimes I will start to prototype things and I'll say, all right, what happens if I come in here? And so in this scenario, I said, you know, I'm going to just create these squares and I'm going to put them in here. And I said, you know what? I think those squares are too big. What happens if I make them smaller? And I like the idea of the smaller ones and being able to put them across. So like if we have eight going up across and 10 squares going up and down for a total of 80 squares, I can kind of do that math. And I think it's gonna be just an interesting thing. Now, one thing to share with you about these, let me see if I can get this off gently, eh, not so gently. But one of the things I did here is on the back of each one of my squares, I've mounted a piece of cardboard. So it's a thin piece of cardboard, just from an old packing crate that I cut up. And what this allows me to do is to lift that piece of paper off the surface just a little bit, just to give it a little bit of relief and to give it a little bit of a drop shadow. You see, when you look at this, kind of how it adds a little bit more dimensionality to it with the shadow that's around the piece of paper. At least that's the overall concept that I'm going for. So I'm gonna to try to aim for that and uh, to be able to create these 80 different squares. Now, again, as I said, I want to work with the smaller squares, and these squares are about an inch uh, on, a, on a side, roughly. It doesn't have to be exact, but within the approximation of about an inch, and again, these have little pieces of cardboard underneath them to hold them up a little bit. And I think conceptually, the idea is working out. Again, looking at it as a full grid will really tell the story, yes or no. Now, in order to do this, I'm going to need, of course, to have some material that I can use for the purposes. And uh, I have here a sheet of paper um, that looks pretty good. But if, I, uh, if I'm being honest, this is a leftover from one of my rejected pieces from last year sometime. Where, again, you start with an idea and you're like, I think this will work. And then you're like, "Nah, I don't love it. Right? It wasn't masking well. I didn't like the way the colors were working. And so I, I have a drawer. It calls stuff to be burned someday. And that's kind of where this ended up. And I said, you know what, instead of just wasting this, why don't I reuse it since I really just need to have one side and I can work with the different colors that are, you know, the different things I need. And I have paper that will be perfect for that. So I'm going to reuse this, uh, this reject, as it were, and use it to create some, uh, some new pieces. Now, the first thing I need to be able to do here, and again, I'm going to grab my quilting ruler because that is, the, that is the, the tool of choice. Again, this is a good two foot by six inch ruler that is transparent, which makes things a little bit easier. But I can come in here and using this as a straight edge, let me pull this over so you can see more of it. I can come in here and I can just start to rag my edges. That's really what I want to be able to do a little bit here. And so I'm just going to kind of pull up on here and I have a strip. Let me get that coil strip out of here. Okay, so now I have a rag edge that I'm working with, and I can continue to do that. I can come in here approximately an inch or so, right, right about there. Again, I'm not going to be super precise with this. I want them to be fairly uniform approximately, and I'm just going to tear off a, a strip of this one-inch paper. But again, creating a bit of a rag edge. And I don't know how many I'll get out of here, maybe a ten or a dozen, so I'm going to need to have a few of these. So let me grab another, another grouping here. And I'm going to continue to do this until I have uh, enough, enough paper to work with here to create all the individual elements that I want to be able to create. So let me uh, pull these up. And we'll, we'll just run a, a quick 
experiment with these guys here and I'll show you the process. So again, what I want to be able to do is I want to, I'm going to just rag the edge. I don't want to have any of these square edges. I don't think that's going to be the effect I'm looking for. And then I'm going to kind of just approximate. I'm going to say, okay, let's create squares that are approximately one inch, maybe an inch and a half in this case. Yeah, we'll get them about the same. And I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to just tear them uh, just by eyesighting them. Just by saying, okay, roughly the same. And they're, they're all coming out a little bit different, which is going to be cool. There we go. Some are a little bit smaller, some are a little bit larger. I think it just makes it visually more interesting than having things be totally uniform. And approximately, okay. I think we're in good shape here. Now again, you know, what I end up doing with these pieces is going to be up to the individual pieces. I'm going to turn them over so that and I think I'm okay with going with kind of more subtle, earth tony sorts of colors because I think it's just going to end up looking a lot nicer if we don't have lots of glaring spots of color. And uh, again, for those of you who are familiar with my artwork, I like vibrant colors. It makes me happy, but I think in this case I want something that's a little bit more subdued and, uh, and not necessarily in your face. So what I'm going to be doing here is I'm working with, uh, with my watercolor set. And this is my travel watercolor kit and has a wide assortment of uh, colors. Here we have 42 different colors. A lot of the ones closest to the bottom here are going to be the ones I'm going to be using today. They're going to be more of the earth tony things, but we'll put a little little spots of, of red and other colors in here. And again, with my grid kind of laid out in front of me, I'm just going to be using a, a ramekin with some water in it and, uh, and a paintbrush. And it's just going to be a matter of coming in and, and you know, picking up some colors and just leaving, leaving some colors. And again, I might, you know, use the same color in, on different things in here, just so I don't have lots of, lots of wasted effort. But again, thinking, okay, brown's not a bad color to, to kind of get in here with some of these different things, and I can do a, work accordingly. And no one's going to really ever come in and look at the individual squares by themselves. What's going to be, this is going to be a, a combination of all these different squares and how they, how they work out. You know, because I'm working with watercolors, there's a lot of flexibility, of course, to really kind of just blend things together and just make kind of an interesting, interesting textures and patterns and of course color variances. That's really the cool thing that we're doing here. There's a little bit of purple in here because why not? A little spot of purple. Not exactly an earth tone color but it's neutral enough and, and it's combined with a whole bunch of other things. By the way, I have some black in here. I think the black is going to be super important to help draw the eye. As we, uh, that in these various places. And again, I'm just really trying to create something that I think is going to make each one of these little elements, almost like they were parts of the jigsaw puzzle, really come to life and, and have their own own identity. Overall, the, you know, the, the artwork is going to be based upon all of these pieces working together. And by the way, just, you know, one of the things I've mentioned, uh, if you've watched my videos, <laughs> there is no right answer. Everything we're doing here is perfectly fine. What I might do, if I'm being totally honest, is I might create a bunch of extra pieces and paint them up. Because it's always possible that when I look at some of these, when they're done, I might think, you know what, that just didn't turn out the way I wanted. That Something about the coloring in that, it's just my brain goes, yeah, that's not a good one. All right, let's just say that that's that. So we have these pieces here. Now, I'm going to give these pieces some time to dry. That's going to be an important thing. And then what I want to do is I want to start mounting the little pieces of cardboard on the back of them so we can get them mounted. And uh, we'll have a fresh piece of paper to build on. And again, we're going to see where this takes us. There's no guarantees on any of this. We'll, uh, we'll play it by ear and uh, come back in a few moments and we'll have this ready to go. All right, welcome back. Now, as you can imagine, it takes a while to get all the paint down and uh, wait for things to dry, but I have an array. Now, I've created more than the 80 that I am required for this project. Not required, but I'm using for this project. So I can have a little bit of pick and choose. There are a few, uh, a few of these instances I'm not as excited about visually, and I may just pair them off. But what I've also done is I've, uh, I've cut up some just small pieces of cardboard. And again, these are going to be backers for these individual pieces. And the overall objective is to take a, a piece that I want to be able to use, like this one here, and let me make a, make a hole. I'm going to simply come in here using a glue stick, and uh, let me I'll put the glue directly on the back of the piece of artwork, and then let me glue down this spacer. 
Now the objective once again for this piece of cardboard is it's going to lift this thing off the surface of the paper just a little bit. When we get it done it just creates a little bit of relief. It's going to be just an interesting visual effect and it's going to play around with the shadows and the rag edges of the paper a little bit as well. All right so uh, there we are uh, 79 of them to go. So I'm going to not excite you with watching me glue up lots of pieces of paper but we'll be back in just a moment and I'll show you what happens once I have everything pulled together. All right, welcome back. So now I've had an opportunity to put uh, these little spacers in the back of each one of these pieces here. And uh, I have a, my sheet of paper. Again, it's a piece of Strathmore heavy duty watercolor paper here. It is 18 inches by 24 inches in size. And what I've figured out kind of preliminarily is that I can fit about eight of these going across with a little bit of space in between each one. So again, uh, I'm grabbing just random handfuls of them because my I have about a hundred of them here, and uh, I figure I can weed out any any of those that I don't think are are strong candidates along the way. And one of the things I want to be able to do, let me pull this down so you guys can see it better. What I want to be able to do is to create kind of a natural border and also create some sort of consistency of space between the individual pieces, so uh, we have something that looks fairly you know, organically uniform, if that makes sense, right? They're, they're, they're there. And we might want to tweak this over a little bit, get same space on both of our margins. And I'll use this top row as really kind of a centering row. Here we go. So I have about the same amount of space here and here, which is what I want in each one of these. And again, I might need to run a, run my ruler across just to make sure that uh, things are running uh, basically are staying on line going across. It looks like I can bring this down a little bit to create that consistency. There we go. That looks better. All right. So what this means now is I will want to come in here and I will want to take some time uh, using my glue stick once again to glue down and start creating this grid. And again the objective here is I'm running eight across and I'll have ten rows of, uh, of eight here. And again I might want to just preliminarily say if I were to do that how do I fit these 10 in? Now it's often a preference of mine. Personally, I like to have a little bit of more empty space at the bottom of a, of a product I'm working on. I just think it, it frames it a little bit differently. I might actually run these guys up a little bit higher. So we have a little bit uh, less white space at the top. Once we've determined which is the top and which is the bottom. And then from there I can really start to figure out the best way to, to frame these guys in here. And so what I may do is really just start to cement these guys into place so I have a framework and then just start to fill in the gaps and just make sure that we have everything working. And of course I can also work on, you know, maybe I want to work on the orientation of individual pieces. There's no right answer here and my encouragement is don't overthink it because you could definitely come in here and say, is that going to look good there or should I move this? Maybe this piece should be here instead. I think what's going to end up happening at the end of this is we're going to get the effect we're going to get and that's really what we're doing. As I mentioned before, the odds of anyone actually coming in and looking at this piece in the future and seeing the individual pieces for what they are is not going to be as relevant, of course, as seeing the sum of the parts brought together as a single product in a project. So in this case, uh, yeah, it's time to get a little bit of gluing done. Again, I, I like you guys way too much to show you me gluing uh, stuff down. So we're going to take a cut. When we come back, I'll show you what I've come up with and uh, we'll see if it works for us. All right, welcome back. Now, again, this is not going to be classified as a one-hour uh, one masterpiece because it certainly takes a while to create all the pieces and glue all the pieces down. But I'm happy to say uh, I'm done here. Uh, I've, I've, as you can see, let me pull this down so you can see the top part. It is a grid, and I realized as I was pasting things down that I actually had room for nine pieces going across as opposed to eight, and I still stayed with, uh, with ten up and down, so we have 90 pieces total in here, which is, uh, you know, it's, it's, it takes a little while to get through. Now, overall, I'll be honest with you, I'm, I'm happy with the effect. The effect is what I want. I do feel that I may have overdone it with the colors. Uh, it's not as subdued as I was aiming for initially. It's a little bit more saturated because, you know, it happens to be my, my, uh, my personal uh, uh, bent toward uh, bright colors. But overall, I like the effect that's coming out of this. I think it's a very interesting look and feel. And I think, in truth, with a lot of uh, projects like this, what I find best to do is to put them up on a wall and look at them for a while. 
And in doing so, what I've discovered is that over time, your brain will go, maybe if you move that, or maybe it should be less like this, it will give you sort of insights as to what's really gonna make your brain happy. I know it sounds like a really weird way to do it, but I think in a lot of ways when we create artwork, especially when we're so close to it and the creator of it, we have the tendency to be a little bit more negative about the outcomes, right? If I showed this to a friend, they might go, that's amazing, right? I'm like, yeah, except for that part there is really weird, you know. You know what I'm saying? It's very hard to be, not be self-critical when we're working with our own things. But that said, I think it the effect is really cool. The grid is kind of fun. I'm going to throw this up on a wall and see what happens. You guys, of course, are going to get a, get a chance to see the, the finished. Uh, you already see the finished here. But that's what we're working with here. So anyway, I'm, uh, I'm happy we get a chance to do this. Now, again, for you, we, we, we certainly sped this up a lot so you don't have to sit through the boring parts, but just the fundamentals of creating the, the torn sheets, painting them up, putting backers on them, and pasting everything down is not crazy complicated. And uh, the, the outcome is pretty, pretty sweet. So anyway, that's what we have going for us. Thank you again so much. If you're still with me, uh, thank you. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. I'm always appreciative. And of course, we do this every single week here at Mixed Media Masters. And we would love to have you be part of what we're doing. So if you haven't subscribed already, yeah, it's a good time now. Just hit that subscribe button. Hit the little bell icon if you uh, want to be notified. And if you just can hit that like, uh, that thumbs up, it really helps us with YouTube. They show our videos to more people when people like them. So we'd love to have that happen. Anyway, that's all I have for you this week. Thanks so much again for being here. And I'll talk to you real soon.